Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. Today we're going to break down the evidence behind the use of diatomaceous earth for the management of internal parasites, those gut worms, in your farm animals. So stick around and I will see you in just a sec. Hi all, thanks for checking back for another episode of Says the Vet. I'm Dr. Says. So we're discussing the research that has been done into diatomaceous earth for the management of internal gut worms today. Now before we jump straight in, please don't forget to subscribe by hitting the emblem down below here. Right, diatomaceous earth, D-E. Could I think of a more topical alternative medicine? You'll hear, yes it works well, no it doesn't until the cows come home. People get passionate, even upset, and the information out there can be confusing. I am not here to turn you pro or against, its use but I am here to walk you through the research that's been done, their conclusions and limitations and yes at the end I will of course want to give my own two cents on its use and how I approach it appropriately in a clinical setting. So just briefly in case you're new to the topic, diatomaceous earth DE is a type of a fine dust really, it's, it's a white colour, it's mined from fossilised diatom shells and crushed down to a super fine powder. Under a microscope, you can actually see the silica fragments that compose it. Those silica fragments are very spiky. And while how it's supposed to kill is unconfirmed, the idea is that those spiky fragments are abrasive to the exoskeleton of arthropods. Arthropods can include your things like worms, fleas, mites. The exoskeleton on those animals is there to protect the animal from either absorbing too much water or losing too much water and drying out. So when the diatomaceous earth causes abrasion, and holes in that exoskeleton, they end up losing moisture and drying out to death. But a few notes, it does also contain trace elements which can confuse the evidence, and we're gonna to come to that in a minute. It's also worth noting that when inhaled by animals or humans, it can cause serious damage to the lungs and respiratory tract. It's abrasive in there as well, so you should always be handling it with care, use a mask, and consider this if you're applying it directly to your animal's skin and coat. And finally, diatomaceous earth is not all the same. We can get varying particle sizes across products and sources. Right, kicking it off from there, let's jump straight into the research. Let's start in 2005. So up to 2005, there had really only been two research articles published in the scientific literature. Published meaning that they have been peer reviewed and analyzed by the scientific community to make sure they are rigorous, reliable scientific studies. There had also been a handful of studies not peer reviewed or published, but conducted by agricultural departments. And then of course a ton of pop science came out at that time as well, just to confuse the public. But of the studies that were done, published or otherwise, they came back confusing as heck basically. Some had success with it, others said it did absolutely nothing at all. In 2005, there was an experiment done with growing cattle, which showed a decrease in fecal egg counts, that's the number of parasite eggs being laid and coming out in feces. A second experiment replicating this with sheep, however, found no benefit. Jump forward to 2013, we had another go at it, adding diatomaceous earth to the food in sheep. Now in this one, they didn't find that it made any difference at all to the fecal egg counts, but there was significantly less larvae developing, so the same number of eggs being laid and coming out the back end, but once they hatched, the larvae were not maturing to adults as easily, so presumably on pasture they would perish which is really interesting. If this was true, it could suggest that the diatomaceous earth is working its wonders on the exoskeleton of the larvae while sitting in the dung pile, if it's true. Fast forward to 2020. We have had some research emerge that went a bit deeper again. The study looked at the fecal egg counts coming out the back end. What they found was that the group that was fed DE, well their parasite burdens continued to increase along with those that didn't have any treatment for three weeks. So for three weeks there was no change, things only got worse. Only at the three week mark did the egg count start to come down and those that were eating DE, everyone else, they kept going up. By the four week mark, there was now a significant difference in fecal egg counts. So that sounds quite promising though. However, keep in mind, these animals were starting with relatively small burdens to start with. These animals would not have been showing disease. They weren't carrying heavy, heavy loads. So the conclusion here was that during a low GIN challenge, just meaning parasite burden, there may have been a small effect of DE on fecal egg count. 
Another consideration in these studies is that they've used different breeds and are likely dealing with different species of gut parasites as well, and maybe this matters, maybe it doesn't. One study looked at feeding it to poultry where they used two different breeds of chickens, um, one that is known to genetically deal with parasites better and the other a standard breed. Feeding diatomaceous earth, they found that the parasite eggs coming out the back end of the already more resistant breed made absolutely no difference whatsoever. In the other breed, however, it made a slight difference but seemed to have a different effect depending on the species of parasite on the inside. So in this study, we have two different breeds of the same species being affected differently and different parasite species being affected differently, right? So where does this leave us? Some say yes, it lowers eggs being put out. Others say no change to eggs, but at least it prevents larvae from developing. Others say no change whatsoever across the board. It at least looks likely that any potential benefit there is is not going to happen quickly, but at least needs to be fed for a few weeks if there is a benefit. This could be for a couple of reasons. It would make sense to me that if it's not affecting the eggs but is actually stopping them from developing into adults once hatched on the pasture, then the benefit would be because there are less larvae being ingested again the second time around. Another theory is that the trace elements found in diatomaceous earth are actually what's doing uh, some of the good in these studies as opposed to those silica particles themselves. If we're starting with animals that are deficient in trace elements, then supplementing them through diatomaceous earth will make them better equipped to deal with internal parasites. It just will. Whereas if those animals are starting out with already good nutritional levels of trace elements, then we might not see much of a difference. So that's another possibility. Confused and befuddled yet? You should be, it's not clear cut. So does diatomaceous earth work? Maybe, for the right individual of the right breed, so long as the burden isn't too great and they're having the correct dose for the right period of time of a high quality product. Or maybe not at all. Is it suitable as a treatment for a high parasite burden in an ill animal? Absolutely not. I am a big advocate of further research into things like this. We all should be. We have drench resistance cropping up all over the show and it's really scary. We need alternatives. But hopefully you can now appreciate why veterinary professionals are often hesitant to recommend the use of DE. You know, I cannot put hand over heart and say this stuff works. We just, we need more research. We need more conclusive studies. It's exciting, but we just don't know yet. Okay guys, you've probably left more confused than when you came. That's what diatomaceous earth is gonna to do to you. I'm sure everyone's gonna have an opinion on it. Feel free to comment away, um, start your own discussions and uh, I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.